Welcome to the League of Kings podcast. Meet your hosts, Willie, J. Dot, Big Brother, and Joe. Join these four distinct voices in insightful discussions about society and culture. Get ready for captivating content, camaraderie, and guaranteed laughter. Sit back, enjoy the show, and remember to like, share, and subscribe for an exciting journey ahead. Hey, kings and queens, welcome back to the League of Kings podcast. And I won't forget my name this time. This is Willie, the habitual line stepper. <laughs> and let's get into the other host. Uh, we got J. Dot Flam. What's happening, King? Oh man, I'm I'm feeling good, man. I uh I got some tea that came in the other day. It's a black tea with espresso beans in it, and I uh, I cold brew it, so I'm on ten with the caffeine right now. Mm. I just let y'all know that because it's you see this glass with the brown liquid in it, and I'm sipping it. I don't want nobody to get the wrong idea. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what kind of tea is it? Well, what 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 um, flavor is that one? You said black. That's, that... that's black tea with espresso. Oh, espresso. Okay, okay. Bo, talk about Joe. How you doing, brother? Doing great. Doing great. Thank you. Just um, I just had some uh, delicious chicken and put some hot sauce on it. Got myself some wine. You know, something not as. You know, not as bad. And then later on, after, I'm going to go get some pizza and wings, man. <laughs> so, 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 y'all, y'all going to let that slide? Y'all just, that's just, that's normal. I, I, that, you know, that, I just wanted to. <laughs> I mean, he's on the show with us. If he wants chicken and hot sauce. Chicken. Now, what was it fried or was it baked? I smoked it. You smoked it. On my. Yeah. Pellet, what you call your uh, your 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 pellet electric smoker. Yeah, yeah. Okay, it's a half smoked. <laughs> I got you. Resident Big Brother, how you doing today, King? I'm good as usual. Just glad to be here with the rest of the league, the League of Kings. Um, just finished some Coca Cola, which people should know. I just love soda. You know, I'm like a kid. I love soda, 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 and mm -hmm. soda and snacks. That's me. Okay. Uh, since, since we're talking about what we just ate and whatnot, and I've been doing the vegetarian thing going on four weeks now, which has been really good. I, I've been liking it. I'm actually down 10 pounds. I feel better. My sleep has been better. I don't get, like, those um, grogginess mid days and stuff but um i'm learning more stuff about the vegetarian lifestyle not saying that this is going to be it because i'm black and i love my ribs and i love my my, my smoked macaroni cheese it, it's just all this to it okay it's probably going to be at my uh brief mint when i pass away is ribs and macaroni and cheese I just want to invite. Yeah, you got it. You got it. I won't be there. I mean, I'll be there, but I'll be ch chilling on the fish tank. Uh, the you know the the the, uh, the the coffee table. Uh, ha, are, ha, are, have y'all are y'all like into reading ingredients and the type of stuff that's actually in the food like that's one big that's thing uh, that's the thing that i'm big right now it's like watching out for bioengineered food you know i've even um been researching finding trying to find a reasonable price spring water so i was doing the alkaline water Turns out alkaline water is not really all that good for you unless you're like a cancer patient, you know, or something like that. It's it's not for everybody. So how how are y'all on y'all's eating habits? I just I just prescribe to moderation. Me, I'm a vegetarian myself, been vegetarian for a while. You know, I don't eat any 
any type of meat at all. I mean, I'm not vegan, but yeah, I just do moderation. So even though I'm a vegetarian, even when I'm doing like pasta and things like that, I, I can't say I look at all the ingredients, but you know, I do try to do as much homework as possible. And I, I like I said before, I'm just more about moderation, moderation, either regular size portions or when I just feel as though I've been overindulging I still do moderation but I just do a smaller portion that's what I do for me and I and as far as water goes I don't really do spring water I just do um I have one of those pitchers that you just pour the water in and it kind of um just drips down and I, the name is escaping me right Brit now Britta? but yes yeah so I have one of those you know, because I, I feel a little bit better and it, and it tastes pretty good, too. So I do that. And between putting it in a Brita and, you know, with the soda stream when I want like carbonated water, too. Mm -hmm. So so that's that's what I've been doing. And see, not to not to knock what you do with the Brita. See, I, I've even seen or read that all it does is just takes out the lead. Mm hmm. It doesn't like take out like all the other chemicals, like the fluoride and all that stuff that's like, you know, in our tap water. Mm -hmm. So I didn't, I was just, what what you, what was your thoughts about that? I think with the way that the environment is now, you do as much as you can mm -hmm. to get it as clean as you can. So that some, I prescribe to that as far as that goes. Okay. What about you, Dejot? J Dot, I know you came in. You you drinking your um, black tea espresso, e espresso, right? Got espresso in it. Okay. Yes, sir. I need my caffeine. Um, yeah, no, I have. It sounds like too much work to be <laughs> eating the ingredients. I, if you'll learn over the course of this show that I'm uh, I'm fairly lazy when it comes to certain things. I just I want to enjoy what I eat. I'm I'm very. Uh, I do read labels when it comes to, you know, what I drink just because of uh, my sobriety. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's one of the, and that's another reason why I, I, I don't even look into food too much because uh, the way, you know, our food and drug administration is set up, you know, you can say, you can say something is non-alcoholic if it has below a certain amount of alcohol in it. So mm -hmm. that doesn't mean it's alcohol free, mm -hmm. even though it's labeled non-alcoholic. So, you know, you see all these labels and these things on stuff and they don't, you know, they don't necessarily mean what they mean. I don't know if you've seen that documentary. Uh, I think the guy who made the Super Size Me, mm -hmm. you know, like a Super Size Me, yeah. opened up you know, yeah. fast food restaurant. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know, in order to label something free range, they just have to have a section of space yeah. that's uh, outside. And so he had like, like a, a two foot semicircle or something that the chickens could walk out to. But other than that, they were, they were in, uh, 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 barn or whatever like, kept it, that yeah. allowed you to call it free range so yeah I just I feel like they're gonna get you one way or another and so I, I, I've given up and I'm old enough to have seen like eggs go from good for you to bad for you to somewhat good for you and bad for you and mm -hmm. they're never they're never gonna make up their mind about what you're supposed to do so I'm just I, gonna enjoy life I remember the first time I watched that I was in culinary school and that changed my life. That supersized me. Like that was, that was the first. After I watched that, I came home, watched the whole thing, and I ended up doing my first thirty days, no meat, no dairy. And that was like in twenty seventeen when I did it. So I mean, we do like no meats for thirty days, but like this is the strictest I've been as far as like processed foods. You know, usually you have like a little little sweet, sweet, I'm using my air quote, sweet snacks that's supposed to be healthy, but they really have just as much sugar and calories, you know, and sodium as, you know, getting a bag of chips or getting a Snickers. In, mo in most cases, you're better off just going to get this, just, just eat the Snickers, man. Don't, don't try to go the healthy route and think that it's because it says organic and all that stuff. Some a lot of that stuff is false advertisement. It really is. They they just throw names on there to make it seem like you know it it's legit, but it's not. You know, Joe. What about you, brother? Um, I'm kind of opposite of you and Big Brother. So I 
Uh, I'm all meat. So steak, pork, chicken, all that. That's with, no, with nothing. Uh, sometimes I put rice on there. So I'm a, I don't do a whole lot of vegetables. And I eat once a day. Mm-hmm. But once a day, I fast all day. So I might have coffee, okay, but no food. And I eat till the end of the day, and I usually eat a lot. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm able to keep my weight where I needed to keep it. So if I need to start working out again or anything like that, but it just works for me. And it doesn't work for everybody uh, trying to control the hunger. Uh, sometimes it's tough, but I work. I feel that it works better for me, you know, the protein. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I occasionally have, you know, obviously we're going to have pizza and wings today. Um, we don't really do much processed food here because my wife is diabetic so everything comes out of the electric wannabe smoker mm. as will as will knows everything everything vegetables from everything comes out of there um everything's uh basically cooked from scratch and uh, she'll have she'll have uh salads and you know I, I would have like the carbs like i'll have some rice and stuff like that but other than that we don't do much process of anything I, I do like mcdonald's fries they're delicious uh, but you know once a month maybe i stop and get the baby uh, she loves the cheeseburger there so we'll get a cheeseburger mm-hmm. um, water i don't really drink much but i drink because i have to because i live in a hot ass state um, but i drink tea black tea uh, unsweetened no sugar nothing with sugar unless you know a little bit of wine so zero sugar uh dark beer and coffee mm-hmm. very little sweet uh very little uh um creamer no sweetener preferably black so okay. that's that's my routine every day every day so. yeah i've been doing the fasting as well i'll um i typically don't eat during the work week i typically don't eat anything until around noon maybe one now, if I feel like, because I'm a type two, so if I feel like my sugar is getting low during that fast, I will, I have like my apples and some cherries to snack on just to kind of, you know, natural sugar to, to, to get it back up. And then, of course, I still drink my water. I got my kombucha teas that I drink. Um, but my fast is usually 10, maybe 10 to 12 hours a day. And then I try not to eat past a certain time. So generally when I get off work, I um, like to have, I like to be done eating by no later than five thirty, six o'clock. And then the rest of the night, you know, it's water. And if I get like a sweet tooth, I go ahead, I will eat some more fruit. But for the most part, we've been eating fruit. We did find some plant-based pieces and little bowls that, you know, do they have some stuff in it? Yeah, because everything has a little bit of something because it's, it's still a process. You know what I mean? But other than that, we may do like a plant-based pizza or a salad. I will have my salad, you know, cut my eggs up in it for protein and stuff like that. But, yeah, I've been pretty much just fruiting it out, man, to be honest. I, I I like the results that I'm getting. I wish there was, there is other foods. You have to be more creative. You know, there's things that I can do. I can come up. I'm sure I can come up with something. I went to culinary school. I'm sure I can come, whip up something. It's just, when I get off work, I'm done. I don't feel like cooking. I just go grab me a big bowl of watermelon and I'm done. I'm, I'm full, you know, so that that's what I've been doing. So, but I have been reading the labels more closely. How do I keep ending up on shows with you guys with culinary degrees, man? I don't. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's to be a trend. Yeah. Well, I know for me, I don't know if y'all know, like I, I went in 2017 and October 2019 was my graduation. But the same Saturday of my college graduation was the same day as my dad's funeral oh. so i didn't even get to walk that saturday so it was i feel some 
I'm not gonna get into it, but I, I feel some kind of way about that. But and then I graduated because I was still working a full time job to support the family household, got got bills to pay. Um, December, COVID. It was like the peak of of COVID. So <laughs> that was pretty much where my culinary skills stopped. Other than, you know, I, I would do orders for people, you know, like I would make them cheesecakes, pies. Um, if it's something that I do, if someone asks, then I'll, I'll make it for them or whatnot. So I, I do, I still do some orders, but not as much as I used to. Just because of the, you know, the things have just changed, you know, things are more expensive, buying material and, you know, I have the boxes, I got stickers, and then, you know, it's just like, hey, uh, well, this cheesecake was, was 18. Yeah, well, yesterday's prices ain't today's prices. So that 18 is now 25. So, because yep. cream, because everything went up. So I'm like, hey, uh, cream cheese used to be $1.99 a pack. Now it's like almost $4 a pack. So, if I got to deal with inflation, so you got to deal with inflation. So, you know, yep. or you can take your ass to Cheesecake Factory, you know, whatever you want to do. I don't, I don't, you know, uh, <laughs> yep. but that was a good, con that was a good conversation. I just want to talk to you about that. See how, see where everyone was at. I see everyone's doing their thing. You know, I've heard some people say I, I want to die happy. So I'm eat what I want to eat. Facts. But yeah. I want, I guess for me, I don't know. Have y'all ever had the um, the a double baconator from Wendy's? Mm-hmm. Mm. <laughs> Joe mouth is water. <laughs> hey, let me tell you something. I had that one time, and I thought it was over. Why would they put so much bacon? And it is it's ungodly, ridiculously. Delicious. Yep. I don't know nobody who would turn it down. I don't care. I mean, Big brother, if you've seen it, you'd be like, I got, I got, I got, I got to at least walk down this alley one time. And I sat on the couch and my body went numb. I don't know what they put. I don't know what. <laughs> I, I, I thought it was over for me. I got the sweating. I drunk like two <sighs> gallons of water. I just knew. I told Fee, I said, hey, if this is it, this is how I want to go because this is ridiculous. Don't do this again. This is the last time but I'm saying because I can't – I don't know how to explain this to my doctor. If I end up in ER, what happened? She brought me a double bacon <laughs> acre. And this, you weren't going to be the only one there No nah, that issue. Yeah, but I'm saying – but. I want to be able to enjoy something like that and not – have in the back of my mind, is this the last one? <laughs> you, I don't want to. Wait, 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 I'm sorry. Just imagine the eulogy. <laughs> we all gather here. Uh, at the baconator. The bacon. The double baconator. Now wait, wait, wait. Now he's met the creator. Hey. And it was and it was the and it was the meal. It was like it wasn't just the burger, it was the fries and the Dude, I was did you right. have a frosty with it too? No, but I I I actually took off one of the patties just so I can finish it. <laughs> Dang, yes, it thing was huge. It's huge. It's huge. It's like two pounds of beef and like a pound of bacon. Yeah. Look at Joe. Okay. Joe was like, "We're not yeah. going. To, we're going to Wendy's, everybody." <laughs> right. Through this pizza, pizza, man. <laughs> Go to Wendy's and get some baconator. You know, I didn't have the the jalapeno bacon mm -hmm. burger thing at McDonald's the other day. Yeah, but yeah, and, and to me, when I go, if, if when I eat something like that, I I just want to have the comfort of knowing that if I lean over, I turn, I go to the restroom, this is it because I ate yeah. this. So, yep. all right, um, welcome to see. the show. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. So who I'm going to start with today? Joe. Oh. 
as an Robert. adult, do you think you should have uh, boundaries with your parents? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think so. I mean, um, definitely with my mom. I mean, obviously, we, we're not talking about you and her sleeping in the same bed. We we talking yeah, yeah, about yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah, I would I would have more boundaries with my mother than I have with my father. My mm-hmm. father's more like my friend. Okay. So, um, but yeah, I mean, I don't know. I just I don't like them getting them getting in, into my business or. Uh, you know, I just keep my family life set private only, you know, whenever we go down and hang out with them and stuff like that. But yeah, I think there should be boundaries, you know, it's kind of like your kids. You want to have boundaries also with the kids, you know what I mean? With, with little kids. So I look at it the same way as, um, I, I do treat my daughters different than my son, obviously when it comes to boundaries. Right. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm kind of trying to do the same thing as my dad did with me when we were growing up is, uh, to be look at him as a friend also. So the boundaries are a lot lower and I can be able to conversate and have to, you know, and be able to let them know what I'm feeling. Okay. No, you know, so I don't get judged. Right. Uh, my mother, I'm sure she'll be like, Wah! you know, freaking yelling at me and shit and mm-hmm. crossing, you know, I just, yeah. Okay. Okay. Big brother. What about you? Yeah, I definitely think like once you become an adult, you should have some type of boundaries with your with your parents, because it gets to a point where, you know, depending on how your parent is, you don't want your parent crossing over into certain, you know, parts of your life or privacy. Like Joe said, you know, certain things you want to keep your parents out of whether they're going to feel as, or whether though you feel as that they're going to judge you or they're always putting their two cents into it. Yeah. So I definitely think healthy boundaries are good because some, some parents just don't know how to stop themselves from always putting their two cents into everything without judgment. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. J dot. And then I'll, I got a, I got a follow up question. What about you? J dot. Yeah. Uh, boundaries with my mom are, are- they never really changed. Like, I, you know, I won't say I feel like a kid around my mother, but you know, it's, it's, it's sort of the same thing. I, I don't curse in front of my mother. Um, I definitely don't use, you know, a lot of the words that I use in other places around my mom. I don't think I ever drank in front of her. Uh, we talk about everything from politics to, you know, I may tell her about my marriage, but like, you know, I, I would never talk to her about my sex life and I she better never mention anything about any her with any other dude. I don't I don't need to know you like that, mom. We got that's definitely a boundary. Uh but yeah, it's it's still the same uh as when I was a kid. You know, it's just I have that with most of my like adult relatives. I still have cousins and stuff that I, I say cousin cousin Nick, cousin Tanya and cousin Sandy. I can't I can't call them by their first name. Like we'll never be on a first name basis. Really? Mind, no matter how old I get. Like, really? That's what it is for me. With your with your cousins? Well, my, my mother's is with the youngest of eight. So a lot of my cousins are like uh in their fifties and sixties. Okay. Now. Okay. Okay. I got you now. I got you. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. I, I get that. Uh I had a follow up question to something that you that all three of y'all said. Do you think think it determines the age gap between you and your parents as far as the you know the the boundaries that y'all talk about you know you could conversate about do you think it's like a a age difference thing i'm sure that may play a part in in it but uh, i think i know for me it's just the way I was raised. I mean, I, I came up in a generation of, you know, this is grown folks conversation. Mm-hmm. You, know, you don't participate in certain conversations. There were tables you didn't sit at. Like I said, dominoes was not a game for young people. Mm-hmm. You know, there, there were things you didn't do because that was for the adults or that was for the older people. And, you know, even as I've gotten of age, it's like around them, I'm still, you know, I'm still the youngin. I'm still a child, not a child, but I'm still, I'm not their contemporary. I'm not their equal, you know, mm-hmm. they're my elders and, you know, I still act the way I would act out of respect, um, you know, because they're my elders. I, 
and maybe it's the the um, the like you said that my cousins I talk to them the way I talk to them because of maybe the age difference but uh yeah I don't know if that was just it I just think you know there was a clear line of separation between you know children and adults when I was growing up and uh it hasn't disappeared for me you know when you say uh Domino's is not for kids you all make it almost make it sound like it's a gateway drug Remember, you remember like when a uh, Talladega Nights? <laughs> no, it was a Talladega. What was the movie when he was like, "What are you? What are you smoking? This is weed. You don't want to smoke this. This is weed. This is bad for you." I can't remember. If it wasn't Talladega Nights. It was some other movie, but the Dewey something. I but yeah, but not, yeah. To me, like bad things can possibly happen at a space table. Bad things are going to happen at Domino's table. Like this is it's going to go that direction. So if you're not adult enough to handle where this game is going to go, mm-hmm. you don't need to be over here. It's not for you. Yeah. yeah. Big brother, what you think? You think age can can tie a uh, age difference can tie into that on how close you are with your <clears throat> with your parents? I do. Where, you know, you see some people who may have had kids earlier in life, you know, like they want to be their kids' friend. You know, so the so they have either limited or zero boundaries, you know, where the kid can see the the parent do anything and the parent can see the kid do anything, you know, you know, even like, you know, just the, the boundaries are just zero where it's just like you're basically friends. You can't even tell who the parent or who the child is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what I was thinking when when y'all was breaking it down. What about you, Joe? Yeah. Um, I agree with, with uh, a lot of a lot of that. Uh, J dot said was um, you know when you're growing up, you're not uh, you're not allowed you're not allowed on the table when they're you know adults are doing stuff. It depends what they're doing, and and it's all about respect also. But I have seen stuff like uh, what Big Brother just said is some people, especially and not to single them out or any way, but like women with their daughters. Uh, sometimes you're like, damn, like who's the daughter and who's the mom and they're acting the same way and they're, there's zero boundaries whatsoever. And, you know, they're pretty close to, you know, they're pretty young. Both of them are pretty young. And yeah, I mean, I'm sure if that mother was a lot older, I'm sure she probably wouldn't, you know, she would have a little bit more of a boundary when it comes to that. But I have seen it a bunch of times where there is zero boundaries and it's all about respect, right? I respect my father, even though our boundaries are different than my mother's. And, um, we, I I hold a level of respect for my father that, uh, I know that I'm not supposed to cross a line on some stuff, even though we are a lot more open with each other about some stuff, you know, um, that I wouldn't talk to my mother about, but, uh, I understand what, what I'm about to say to him, you know, it's like I better not cross the line in any way or offend him in any way. I have to always remain respectful to, towards him. But um, age does matter a lot, I think, too. Also, how you're how you're raised, how they, how your parents raised you too. I think that has a lot to do with it too, right? Uh, influences uh, people that you hang out with. Um, I think that that also contributes to the way uh, to that. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Uh, one thing I will say, or my thoughts is, when you was talking about how the daughter and the mother, you don't know which one is which because of how they act. <clears throat> my thought about that is because maybe because the mother was so young, she never really had a childhood. So a lot of the things that they do together and speak about, she's she will, she's almost living through her daughter to have to get that experience. That's my yeah. thought about that. I mean that that's that's that, that's what I came up with. Is it true? I don't know. But it does make sense in 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 some aspects. I can't speak for them, but this is just that's just my thought. Uh yeah. yes, I agree on the um there should definitely be some boundaries. You know, when when you become an adult in the black community, I think most parents can be more involved 
when you're an adult because they don't want you to make the same mistakes that they made when they was an adult or a young adult. So they try. It comes off as them telling you what to do, but at the same time, it's the presentation. You know, so I didn't, I didn't go through that. You know, my, the boundary, I didn't, I didn't have any boundaries with my dad because we didn't really have a relationship like that. Now there was still respect. Yes, sir. No, sir. But that was just the way that I was brought up for everybody across the board. Hell, even me and Fee, we say yes, you know, yes, sir. Yes, ma'am, to each other. And we well grown, you know what I mean? So it, it's just that's just the way I was brought up. Well, my mom, we we have boundaries. We don't have, we've never had like, you know, like you said, you know, her boyfriends and stuff like that talk and whatnot. But we have a we have an open line of communication. Um, I have been known to tell my mom that you know sometimes you gotta cuss a motherfucker out, mama, and she and she say, you know what, you're right. You know, sometimes you do. That doesn't mean I don't respect my mama. It's just that. <laughs> I'm I'm just being honest. You know, that that's just that's the way me and her grew up because it was just me and her for a while. So we we just have that open line. She would be straightforward, I'd be straightforward. You know what I mean? Uh I remember telling her when I when I stopped smoking smoking weed. Cause she was always one of those ones, you know, if you get in trouble, just 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 say that you did it. So a lot of times I would tell her myself. But because I told her myself or I told her I wouldn't get in trouble because I had already learned the lesson and all that, you know what I mean, type of deal. But there should definitely be some boundaries between. It's, it's, it's extreme between me and my mother. If you want to send a chill down my spine right now, every time I get a text from my mom, like, I'm listening to your latest episode, I'm like, oh, no. Right. It's not for you. Now, uh, I don't know if my mom's, she could have listened to a couple episodes. I'm not for sure. But she just, she knows who I am. So she wouldn't be surprised of anything that she may hear. You know what I'm saying? So. Um, do y'all, do y'all feel like, do you feel like the way that your parents were with, was with you is how you feel like you need to be with your kids? No, a lot of what I do with my daughter is me trying and I, and I love my mom and I think, you know, she did the best jobs she could do you know she did she was doing what she knew how to do but a lot of what i do with my daughter is me like trying to not do some of those things i remember being a, a grown man and like asking my mom if she was proud of me because i don't remember her mm -hmm. ever saying it and it was you know and i was not an easy kid to deal with you know i'm sure there were reasons why she couldn't say that to me because i was probably breaking something or or talking back or terrorizing the house um but I know the effect that that had on me. My mom used to talk about me on the phone to her friends while I was in the room. And I, and I, I had a moment where I was talking to my mom and Elise was there and I was telling my mom something Elise was doing and I could see her face and it stopped me. It was like, nah, you know, I know what that felt like when my mom did it to me, so I'm not gonna do that to you. Uh, and so yeah, I, as much, there is a lot that I carry on from her, but most of the conscious effort is to not do something that my mom used to do. Do you remember your mama ever cussing, but she would spell it out when she was on the phone when you when you was around? She'd be like, girl, no. I can't believe S-H-I-T. I can't believe it. She never, your mama never did that around you when she was on the phone? My mom didn't cuss much, but when she did, it was for effect. So she wanted you to hear 
mm-hmm. your word. Like she needed you to understand what she just said. Yeah. I, I learned how to spell cuss words <laughs> at an early age. S H I T. Okay. All right. Uh Joe. <laughs> um Yeah, I mean I I was lucky, man. I was lucky growing up. Um my parents were excellent. Um, you know, they uh they, they didn't buy us what we wanted, they bought us what we needed. They taught us that education was the you know, the way to go and if we got in trouble, we got in trouble. Mm-hmm. And uh but we were different kids in a different era, different time. And uh you know, I'm definitely different than my son, you know what I mean? But uh I my parents hardly hit us at all. Um there was a if you were doing bad, our way to take away our punishment would be you're not going outside to play with your friends. That was a you can whip us and mm-hmm. shock us with whatever you want, and it's not that bad. But take, we're taking away our freedom to go outside with our friends. That is the ultimate. You know what I mean? That's like the ultimate like pain right there. While you're watching everybody and show up in the window, you want to watch them go play outside, and it's just damn. Hold on, everybody's hold on. playing, and you're just looking out the window. Hold on, Joe. Hold on. I don't mean to cut you off, but we found out some shit about you in this episode too. So, chicken and hot sauce. We 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 let that one slide. <laughs> but did you, but did you just say get shocked? And did, yeah, I don't know. Did you, I was just you know like freaking like Rambo. You talked about Rambo. You know how they're shocking Rambo with the thing. You know when he's when they're captured him. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 yeah, I know about it in the movie, but I never seen somebody get shocked like with a cow prod or something as a punishment. I don't know. I was just figuring like oh, something okay. bad, like shocking somebody. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, okay. I don't know. Like, I thought black parents were bad. Like, yeah. I never heard of yeah, he said shocked. Well, I... well the, 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 <laughs> some Mexican people, they get the belt. They get these weird ass belts that they make down there in Mexico that are made out of, I don't know, what kind of animal. And like, they wet it. Mm. And they hit you with that shit. Or they, they have like telephone, they have some of the telephone pole things and they make them as whips yeah man some people are brutal down there to their kids yep Stop. but we didn't we didn't get any of that uh mm. but i so i'm kind of learning how to take you know i'm I'm learning with my kids because my parents are really good mm-hmm. so you know i mean i i didn't really learn anything else but but good stuff from them so I'm um, just you know with my kids is um, I'm trying to find what way I can parent you know when it comes to that kinds of stuff. But I mean, I definitely like to use their their stuff. You know, I, I like to use their the way they did things when they were raising us. Mm-hmm. Is take away their shit. You don't want to do good in school? I'll take away the Xbox, or you won't. You know, because they don't care about going outside anymore. You're, like, You're not going outside. I don't care. We'll play Xbox. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They, <laughs> you know they don't. Mean? Yeah, they don't care no more. Yeah doesn't work so now i just i'll take away the damn game or cancel the wi-fi and you're screwed Mm -hmm. and and that's something that they taught me just in a different version thanks for reminding me because i need to change the wi-fi password uh (laughs) i i've been meaning to do i I supposed to do it yesterday so i need to do it here soon big brother (laughs) i'm still laughing as you've been changing the wi-fi (laughs) password He's like, oh yeah, they did that yesterday. Yeah. Um, well, when I deal with my nieces and nephews, because I don't have kids, you know, just when my my relationship with them is just to build them up, and when they do bad things, I like to have a conversation with them. Yes, I'm that person. We're going to have a conversation where I want you to understand what you did wrong. So I'm more on that level. I know a lot of people may spank their kids and everything like that. I just don't believe in beating kids because I don't believe you can beat good behavior into someone who has done something. You know, you have to take other routes. So I really like what y'all do. You just take take something away from them. Teach them like, look, your actions had consequences. Either you're going to receive something good if you do something good or, or something's being taken away. 
like Joe's freedom when he was little and he had to stay in the house. You know, you just take something away from him. Mm-hmm. Now, I, I, I didn't say that that's what they do. I didn't say that I, I mean, because I have trauma. So, I yeah, if they was my kids, it, it would be a different story. I told you I'm I'm lazy. You know, conversations sound like a lot of work. <laughs> Cattle prod. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah. It, it's 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 different for me because I'm I'm a stepdad, so I, I'm not able to discipline the way that J Dot and Joe can and could. Uh, I'm, so I, I'm I, lucky. I, my daughter doesn't. She doesn't like to see me disappointed. So mm-hmm. I don't have to hit her or anything. If she can tell that I'm upset or she bothered me like that, that hurts her more than anything else I could do. So right. I don't know if I have it in me to, to hit her. Okay. Okay. And and there's nothing wrong with that, you know, and there's nothing wrong with, you know, the approach that resident brother does, you know, with, with speaking. Cause so that can be just as, as effective, you know, and I'm sure that he has the words to uh, to make someone feel, you know, incompetent, uh, <laughs> less less than. <dead. laughs> Tear them down verbally. Tear, verbally. No, just like real quick. Like my one of my nephews told a a half truth, and it wasn't the full lie, but it was a different version of the truth. Mm-hmm. And I explained to him. I said, every time you lie you go down a couple percentages. That means a person will believe you just a little bit less every time you tell them something. The more lies you get caught in, I say your percentages go down. So if you come to me and tell me something and you've already lied a few times, instead of me standing 100% and understanding, like believing you, now my belief might be like, mm, it might be down to 80%. And it, that was very effective with him. Mm. Okay, okay. Jay, that you you mentioned something about therapy last last episode. Do you think? Um, and I'm not saying this to offend anyone that's that's listening or that may go through this, but do you think therapy can be used as a crutch? I definitely do, and um, I get in these conversations with people a lot. Like I, I've been diagnosed as a bipolar uh, bipolar two, and um with anxiety disorder and anxiety is one of the big ones. Like there's so many people blaming things on anxiety that I saw someone post the other day, like, you know, anxiety is just a normal emotion. You know, people need to, you know, stop blaming their behavior on anxiety. And, um, and that's true. Anxiety is a normal human emotion. We all experience it. Anxiety disorder is something completely different. You know, I've had times where I took with the, the thing that trips me up the most is when I when I am afraid that I forgot something I'm supposed to be afraid of. And now I'm like I'm scared because I can't remember what I'm supposed to be scared of. Mm. And that makes no sense. But it's a real emotion and it's, it's debilitating. Like I almost can't function because I'm so worried about what I'm supposed to be worried about that I don't know. So basically, I'm worried about nothing. But, you know, and so, yeah, I, I think a lot of people will experience an emotion they don't like and then, you know, do the whole therapy thing. And, um, and it, and it's good, you know, but it's, it's not an excuse for bad behavior. You can't, you know, go out and do these self-destructive things or do these, uh, mean or hurtful things to other people and just be like, well, I'm going to therapy. I'm trying to get better. You know, it's like, no, you actually have to get better. You actually have to use the therapy for what it's intended to be used for to help you heal from something or to help you become a better person and not just as a, a thing to say you're doing so that that means we should all excuse you know, everything else that you do. I think South Park had a great episode where the people were like putting boxes over their heads so they could use their phone. And that was, it's because I have anxiety. Mm-hmm. It's like, no, you have anxiety. So do something about it, you know, get some meds, go to therapy, do the work so that you know how to cope. And you know how to function in society. Don't put a box over your head and tell the rest of us we're supposed to be okay with that, you know, because you have anxiety. Right? So that, that's what I see 
today in terms of therapy that makes me think a lot of people are using that as a crutch and as an excuse to behave badly. Okay. All right. Makes sense. You, uh, you're a big fan of South Park, aren't you? I am. Yeah. Because they make fun of everybody. Of everybody. <laughs> they did an episode about alcoholism, and it, it got to me. I was upset for mm-hmm. a minute, and then I had to be like, I can't. How can I be upset? I laughed at the Mormon stuff, so I got to deal with that. <laughs> <laughs> that Mormon episode is one of my favorites. But I digress. <laughs> I got you. I got you. Joe, got you. what about you? Yeah, I, I think people use... <clears throat> I think Jay Dot's right. You know, you want to. You know, people use uh, therapy as an excuse, um, and they also use it as an excuse to get high. You know, to get that shit. You know, to get antidepressants and. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I think that you. You sh- you shouldn't have excuses, but people are gonna make them anyways. You know what I mean? I think uh, I believe in uh, just owning up to it. And uh, it, my therapy is, you know, try to fix, try to do, try to do better. You know what I mean? If I screw up or uh, I'm not doing something right, my therapy would be to uh, fix it, right? Learn from my mistake and fix it, not grab a, well, I need therapy. I'm going to, you know, that's why I did it. You know? mm-hmm. um, I think that we're, a lot of people are full of excuses. And I think that the, if you kind of put those away, I think it'll make you a better person and you'll eventually <clears throat> look, you know, and, and see where your faults are instead of using something else as, you know, a crutch as an excuse. Okay. Big brother. Um, I do believe some people use therapy as a cr- uh, crutch. That was the question. Yeah. So I do believe that. And my thinking on that is because I don't think some people know to set goals for themselves in therapy and to work with the therapist to set goals, meaning, you know, you may have some timelines, but you have to have a clear view of what you want to accomplish in therapy. Uh, You need a therapist that is not going to rush you out of, you know, situations, but that is going to help guide you out of it. So a combination of not setting goals for yourself in therapy and what you want to accomplish And also where you, with therapy, some people, I I feel and think, some people stay there because some people just need to unpack, you know, and I think if you're one of those people who are in therapy where it's just, you just need to unpack a bunch of issues and trauma and look at it and get the tools that you need to, you know, to deal with it and to live your life. You know, you have to have that view, that view. One, once again, to answer the question again, set goals for yourself so it doesn't become a crutch for you. So you're not always leaning on it all the time. And two, you know, at the same time, understand that, you know, if you just need to unpack and get some tools on how to live your life. Some people are in therapy for long periods of time. Some people are in therapy for a while and then go back. So it's just about what you have to be very clear and figure out what you need therapy to be for. Okay. Okay. Good. Good views. I, I, I enjoy that. That was, I actually learned something. Um, I think, I think people do too as well. I think some people use it, uh, mainly, what Dot and Joe was saying as far as uh, they would act out, so they would use the therapy as I, this is what I need, you know, to because this is why I'm doing what I'm doing. Instead of them taking the um, owning owning their actions, you know. So I've, I've I have witnessed that. Um myself you know seeing people do that and then they turn around well this is this is why i need it like no you just need to own up and you know um accept responsibility for what you did you know or whatnot or i mean sometimes people need to unpack some type of trauma or issue so that 
they don't continue to escalate the trauma that they that they have endured. So I, I get that. I get both sides. I, I understand everything that y'all are saying. How about but, uh think think about this? I have a question for you guys. How about if you're going for therapy for depression, for instance? Mm-hmm. And you got your therapist telling you something. Well, how about if that therapist doesn't really believe in what they're telling you? Say so the therapist don't believe what they're telling right. you. Like, so they like could just keep telling you some bullshit, but they don't really believe in what they're telling you. At all, the therapist. You know I mean? The therapist don't just believe. You, yes, I think it's like what Big Brother was saying. Like, you have to go into therapy with specific goals and outcomes, you know, in mind. And if, I mean, it's just like with the with the the drugs for mental health. If you're, you know, sometimes you got to try different prescriptions. You go into a, a therapist and they're telling you some stuff that they don't believe, and you're putting the stuff in practice and not seeing the results that you know. You intended to see, well, then you might need to find a new therapist. Mm-hmm. You're taking a you're taking a medication and it's not doing what it needs to do for you. You might need to take a different medication. You know, it's not enough just to say I'm going and somebody's telling me to do something and I'm doing what they're telling me to do. But you know, but things are still messed up. But I'm I've done my part. Like that's that's not enough. Mm-hmm. You know, you you got to be the own you got to be your own advocate. You know, for your health. And if somebody's not getting the job done for you or, or you're not getting what you're seeking out, then go seek it someplace else. But just don't sit there and listen to bullshit and, you know, and get bullshit results and then, you know, blame the world on what they did to you. So basically yeah. ask yourself the question, if you, is this like basically saying, is this working for me? Is this working for yourself? Evaluate yourself with the treatment that you're getting, right? Because like I said, people could be giving you some bullshit and people just, oh yeah, and they, you'll buy it. You know, from a therapist that's supposed to be helping you. But not everybody is the same. That's what I'm trying to get is, you know, I feel like some therapists treat everybody the same. Mm, out here just taking okay. care. You know what I mean? It's like, well, not everybody's the same. So, you know, I think that not every therapist is going to work for every single person out there. That's why you kind of have to self-evaluate, like J. Dot said. Self-evaluate what position you're in to maybe get the help that you need. Well, I, I went, I'm, I'm sorry. Go ahead. First time around, oh, I'm sorry. No, you go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I went to a therapist like the uh, first time around and um, I would sit there for session after session and I would just talk and he would look at me and uh, shake his head, ask me a question or something like that. And I would just talk and that would be the end of the, the therapy session. And, uh, you know, for a while that turned me off to therapy. I was like, it's, it does nothing. It's, you know, it's not helping me at all. It's not doing anything. And it's my wife at the time that had to be like, well, you need to go to a different therapist. Mm-hmm. That doesn't mean therapy's bad. That means that's not the therapist for you. Yeah. That, yeah. that 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 was exactly what I was gonna speak on. That you know, in my journey of trying to find a therapist, you know, one of the things that's kind of that would hold me back in the beginning was the fact that I knew that the first therapist may not be the may not be the fit for me. I may have to go through two or three, maybe four different therapists before I found the right one. And my mind is like, I don't want to have to tell my story five different times to five different people just to find the right one. You know what I'm saying? To me, being the kind of person I am, that was a turnoff. I don't want to do this. I don't want to keep repeating myself. I don't want to see you for three months. It doesn't work out. So then I got to go find another one, do it again for another two, three months just to find out that you, you, you're all, so you don't mix with me. So that was a turn out. That was a turn off for me in the beginning in my search of trying to find a therapist. But you know, finding just a therapist to, with the same generation as you would be better, or somebody from a different generation. Good question. Same, same, same generation. I, I say yes, but it's also no. Because the yes part is they will probably be more likely to understand what I have been going through, depending on what I'm going through trauma wise. But at the same time, it's kind of like um, what what is it you, you want the outside looking in someone who's 
an older generation will have a totally different outlook on what I'm going through in a different in a different solution. But I, if I can just add before we move on, mm-hmm. whereas like you should keep moving on until you find the therapist that's best for you. It's kind of I equate it to if you keep taking your car to this mechanic and it keeps stalling and failing on you, you know, you're not going to stop taking your car in for repairs and you're not going to keep going back to that mechanic. You're going to find a better mechanic. So it is beneficial to you to move on and tell and get a different therapist until you find the right one for you. And I know you said you don't want to keep telling your story over and over and over again. But to me, to tell your story over and over again is you telling it to yourself enough times until you can hear it for yourself. So it's not just something that you would, you experience. Now you're hearing it out. And now you're like, oh, now that, you know how sometimes you just got to get the thought out of your head. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you just got to get it out of you so you can see it. And you know, who knows you hearing it enough time as you look, listen to a look for a therapist that can help you set your goals for what you want out of therapy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Nice, big brother. Nice. Yeah. All right. So, y'all, we good with that? Anybody got anything else they want to add? No? Okay. Cool. You going forever? <laughs> All right, well, let me ask you this then. At what point would you recommend someone find a therapist? Um, I mean, if I, I, I say the same thing that I say to people with the alcoholism, like, uh, if you, if you are thinking you have a problem, I don't think people who aren't alcoholics spend a whole lot of time wondering if they are alcoholics. I don't think people who don't need therapy spend a whole lot of time wondering if they do need therapy. I think if you have the, the thought crosses your mind and maybe I should talk to someone, then you should probably talk to someone. Mm-hmm. Okay. And, uh, you know, I think that that's it. You know, try it out. Don't you know if if it turns out you don't, it, it's not for you. It's not for you. But if it turns out you do, then that was one of the best decisions you've ever made. Yeah. Do y'all do y'all remember when um, me and Fee had like a we did a segment on that TV show Couples Therapy that's on uh, Showtime. And one one of the things that we kept recognizing just watching the show was the people who needed it the most was the people who didn't even know that they needed it. They always would be like the aggressor in the in the relationship, or they would be uh, codependent on their spouse. And then, like, the more layers they would peel back, the more they would realize from the therapist, like, this is actually, you actually need to do some one-on-one work. Before we can go forward with this couple's therapy, you actually should go do some one-on-one work because it would benefit not only the relationship, but it would benefit you that way that you can have a more healthier relationship with your spouse yeah so i think by the time they notice i feel like some some by the time they notice it's too late man there's a lot of damage already oh and uh by the time you know they open their eyes they're like oh shit i I messed up i think now it's just damage control from there on out and sometimes it's too late you know what i mean and I, i think that's what it is some people just don't notice that they're they're causing all that harm to themselves and their families or people around them but when it's too late then they finally realize they're like oh shit dug myself a hole uh, it, it's hard it's hard to tell you know i can't speak for everyone because i don't right and i haven't gone through that so it's... big brother yeah is our generation responsible for changing the narrative of what a man is what is a man <laughs> i mean exactly. we know what it is you know, like, it's like, it's like that. I think that's such a broad question. Are we responsible for changing what the, narr- what the narrative of man is? I say no, we're not. We're, 
we just need to leave space for people's stories, give people space to live their life. You know, everybody wants to tell you what a man is, but is everyone living up to the definition of what they're telling you what a man is? Mm. That's where that's that's the way I see it. It's like, are you living up to what you're telling me? You know, you know, how some people say, do as I say, not as I do. You know, you got some people t- trying to tell you how to be a man and what it is to what a man is, but they're missing the mark. So no, it's not up to our generation to, you know, change the narrative, you know? Okay. J dot. Um, yeah, I, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say, yes. I, um, I think that masculinity in general, uh, seems to be under attack these days. And, um, you know, I, I look at some of the things I see on like social media and, 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 and just, just everywhere. I, I can't imagine what it must be like for a young, uh, a young male these days uh, to just grow up with this idea that, that what he is inherently is somehow wrong and needs to be tamed or, or reined in in order to be um, acceptable. And, um, you know, I, I hear what Big Brother is saying, but, you know, I, I think if, if, if the only people that could speak on topics were people who were, you know, following them by the letter, then, you know, nobody could teach anybody anything. Uh, I think a lot of us, even when we aren't living those lives, we know the life that we should be living and, um, and we can, you know, pass on that lesson. But I, I do think we need to, I do think our generation and, and it's probably every generation, all the generations before us and the generations to come um, have the responsibility of, of kind of carrying the mantle of masculinity and manhood and uh, and teaching what that is, and for us, yeah, I think we have the added responsibility of, like you said, changing the narrative, because to me, the narrative that's that's being spun right now um, is very destructive, and I and I can't imagine what it must be like, like I said, for a little boy, you know, to just uh, every day kind of hear that you know the world is bad and it's all your fault, or it's all you know people with the same chromosomes that you have it's fault, and you know misogyny and. You know, when you hear toxic masculinity, you know, as much as you hear it these days um, and you never hear, you know, anything comparable to that about anybody else. uh, It just makes you feel like, you know, like something must be wrong with me that needs to be I need to unlearn something or I need to fix something about me, you know, in what I am from birth uh, in order to be right or okay. And uh, I think there are a lot of misconceptions about masculinity um, and manhood. And uh, yeah, and I, I kind of feel like it is our generation's responsibility to, you know, in our dealings with the people we see every day and our children, I need to impress upon my daughter what I think a man is. Um, if I had a son, I need to raise him to be what I think a man is. And uh, yeah, and, and, and these are a lot of these things that I would be telling my daughter to look for or I'd be teaching my son to be aren't necessarily things that I am, but they are things that I either aspire to be or, or know I should be. And I'm trying to be, um, but I've, I've missed the mark on a lot of these stuff. And I want you to be better than my, I am. I want you to find someone better than I am. I would, I won't, I won't accept you. Uh, that's a harsh word. I shouldn't say accept, but I, w- I wouldn't be cool with, you know, my daughter dating someone less, less manly or less of a man than I am. Um, so I need to teach her all of the things that I'm not that I think she should be looking for. I th- I think it was well put by both of you, and I I get both sides. I think the real question should be, <laughs> what is a man? Because everybody has their own definition of a man of what is a man and which is I think part of the issue is that my perception of a man is different from Joe's perception of what a man is and what Joe's perception is different from J dots and then J dots is different from big brother. So no, you got four different personalities, four different backgrounds 
but you got four men with four different perceptions of who they're supposed to be. And to me, I think that's really the layer that needs to be pulled back because we don't really, we don't really know. We just going based off what we was taught and how they was taught. So, I mean, I know we've already had like the alpha, you know, the alpha male talk and uh, something. We talked about something else along that lines, but we don't really, we, we, we kind of, we, we think we know, you know, we got the social media influence. We got, you know, the, the, the neighborhood gigolo influence, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, we got our favorite rapper influence telling us what, how a man's supposed to move, you know, the movies. We have so many different influences on what a man's supposed to be. And none of them are the same. We don't even know. We don't know what, what, what a man's supposed to be other than you're supposed to have, you know, all the all the working mechanics <laughs> of a man, you know, <laughs> outside of that, you know, mentally, emotionally, physically, we we still trying to put it together. Joe, what about you? What you think? I think social media is all jacked up, man. I think that they, um, I think with all this shit going around, um. All this stuff being said, I think that that's why a lot of kids are struggling, trying to figure out. I like what J Dot said is trying to figure out what the hell you know what, what you're what are you supposed to do, right? Um, you see a lot of stuff about uh, women saying that you know this is the way a man should be, and then you have other people. I mean, it's just back and forth, back and forth. I mean, I'm still learning how to be a man, mm -hmm. to be honest. Yeah, um, I don't know. Um, my perspective or my view of a man is my father right but uh you know my father was worked that uh, was good to my mom i mean you know he was kind of like the leader of the house but my dad was always working but my mother was actually the leader of the house because she was the one that would take us everywhere so as the definition of a man my mother i mean that's what i mean you know what i mean so you don't you don't know what you're right you don't know what what that is but i learn every day uh, I tell my kids, uh, what I tell them is, you know, I want you to be better than me. Uh, what, whatever the hell that means is I hope that they're getting the, you know, they're getting, they're getting some good info off of that. And, um, I don't try to push them to, to be a man. I just want them to take care of their families and be respectful to people, uh, no matter what color they are, no matter where they're from and, uh, to take care of your, take care of their kids. You know what I mean? And, I mean, that to me is is a man, right? Um, to me, right? Take care of your kids. Make sure you have a decent job. You don't have to be a scientist, but a decent job. Take care of your kids. So you show your kids that you work hard, right? To show them hard work, uh, the respect. Um, and that to me, that's what that means, right? I mean, like I said, it could be uh, a, an alpha male is completely different mm -hmm. uh, to me, right? Then and being a man, uh, but they have the same, they share some of the same stuff, right? Being a good leader, you know, but uh, being a man is more of a, I believe more of a household type thing. Um, that, I mean, I don't know. That's a tough question. You know what I mean? Cause I, I, I'm still learning every day. You know what I mean? And uh, trying to figure out um, how to be a good dad and all those things. Right. I mean, trying to live up to what, how my dad was, um, you know, it's, it's, it's hard. You know what I mean, it's, yeah, it's big shoes to fill. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And, but I mean, that's all I know. Just try to do the best that I can mm -hmm. if that make me whatever man comes out of that. Yeah. You know I mean, anything you want to follow up on that big brother before we um, move on? Uh, just real quick. I think everything that all of us said, you, somebody can hear all that. Mm-hmm and feel comfort no matter where they're at. Like you can hear it. Like I, like, I think we all said something that has something that somebody can pick up on and be encouraged by yeah. definitely from everybody's viewpoint. Yeah. 
All right. Well, before we wrap this episode up, we still got to do the health is wealth segment. So, big brother, what type of a uh, grooming routine you got? Cause I see you over there. You uh, look your, your skin look exfoliated. <laughs> it looks it looks conditioned. It looks moisturized. It looks hydrated. What kind of skin routine you got going on over there, brother? What kind of grooming? I feel attacked. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I need a safe space. Say no. <laughs> uh, thank you. Uh, like <laughs> Joe's dying. No, like like I said, I love this segment. You know, health is wealth. You know, your skin is, you know, can show, you know, you know, your health. So you, but to, to your question, yes, I, you sh- I do exfoliate. So I hope that falls in line with everyone's message. Uh-huh. <laughs> it just doesn't sound right. It, it... <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, yeah, exfoliate. But let me just say this. I used to suffer from very, like chronic acne. I I used to have very bad skin, like very, very bad skin. Uh, Not bad skin. I don't want to say that because I want people to take that. I had skin that I, you know, a lot of acne on it and things like that. Uh, So now I'm to where, you know, I exfoliate. I use a special kind of lotion and it's over the counter so people can get it too. Uh, You know, so yeah, just making sure I wash my face, you know, just stuff like that to keep my skin the way it's looking. Okay. Okay. Uh Joe, what about you? I meant to ask you this on the uh, for the culture. If if if, the... if yeah, if Mexicans have like a uh skin routine, I can't I, I can't ask that, big brother. No. Is that a was that cross? I'm interested in that. I'm, 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 no, it. I'm just... it was the way that you the way you packaged it. <laughs> I'm with you, really. I understand. Man. Yeah, I just, I'm, yeah, I, I wanted to ask, like, do y'all, do y'all have like naturally oily skin? Do y'all have dry skin? I mean, I'm, I, I've seen plenty of Mexicans with horrible acne, but I'm just saying, do y'all have a skin routine? Do y'all even have like products to use? Mm, for men, is I never saw my father put all that stuff on that you do now you know mm-hmm. what i mean uh it was mainly the hair man it had to be like shiny you know what i mean that's that was like that's the man thing back there it's like and i'm sure in a lot of places right it's shiny hair you know mm-hmm. what i mean but uh no i mean uh many women right they that's what mexican women they want to put all kinds of shit in their face and everything and you know what i mean to look forever young but not for guys i mean i i do it I mean, I might put some lotion on, but I have oily skin. So it looks like I always have, you know what I mean? But no, I mean, I don't. Now it's different. I mean, now, like, everybody uses all kinds of product. But when I was growing up and stuff like that, like, I don't put anything on. I just kind of trim and shave once in a while. But um, not not really. Hmm. But yeah, I mean, we have some products for Mexican people that they use, you know. But it's like mainly just women, just for, just for women. So they they had like they would have to like go to like a bodega to go get it, or a, a market. Like <laughs> they go to, they go to the market. Well, a lot of the shit is like <laughs> trickery shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like a lot of stuff is um, uh, stuff that somebody made in somebody's house. Mm. Okay. okay. So it's, it's weird culture type stuff from the trees. Oh, okay. 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 That's that part we were trying to find out about. Yeah, we was about. like like we were trying to figure out when does when does the goat blood and <laughs> chicken heads come in at. That's what we was that's what that's what me and Dot was waiting on. I wash my face with leaves or something like that. I just wanted to Yeah. Yeah, they do that stuff, man. It's it's all true. All well, there's this lady that used to use semen 
and put it on her lotion. So, uh, oh, what I you open that door? Yeah, I'm just saying. I you know, <laughs> had one before, so I figured I use the other one. Yeah, I've I've seen the videos where they drank it and they had to have a particular. They had to be vegan or vegetarian in order for them to. I've seen. Uh, yeah, that's. I see. All right, I didn't even want to go any further down this rabbit hole, but. Isn't that the most non-vegan thing you could do? That's people. It is people. Anyway. It is people. Oh. Yeah. That, did, that seems so anti-vegan. Why would you care that the person is vegan? But, I'm sorry. Mm. Well, you know, there used to... Uh, I I did a, a search this stuff because there was women that were throwing that stuff on their face from their boyfriends and stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, because they saw it on TV and they were breaking out. Mm-hmm. Because you, you That's what I would think. It. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. what I would think. Well, there's a company that you send your stuff in, and there was this Mexican famous Mexican movie star lady that would send that this company you would send your semen in, and these people put it into this lotion mm-hmm. and they sell it, kind of like collagen type shit for your face, right? Yeah. Well, these people are like, oh, it must be just regular shit, so they just started breaking out because that shit dries you up. Yeah. So it's just because semen has some kind of vitamin something on it, but yeah. you have to put it in the product you can't just shoot it at somebody's face and expect it for you to look like <laughs> yeah yeah the, the the lady that her video like blew <laughs> blew up her video blew up <laughs> a couple years ago and she was talking about you can't just it's not just some random guy like yeah like she she knew his diet she knew his routine she knew she knew him so she will only use his you know, which I'm, I mean, to each to each his own. Uh, you know, it it is what it is. I know we said you could learn stuff on this show, yeah. but this was not the I'm, type of thing I was trying. To you know, at all. I, I but have, it also goes into the fact of why do men, some men, why don't they take care of their skin other than washing it with like some soap? Right. Well, I was I was gonna say, you know, I feel like since Joe went there, I felt like eating coochie is beneficial for men's beard and they like look at my beard. You see how look at it, J Dot. You see how shiny <laughs> I'm just female the, left the room. Did the she skit? leave the room or something? Yeah, she, she did. Somewhere. She left the room. <laughs> she left. Uh, wait, wait. Somebody's gonna be like, oh, you gotta go listen to the new episode. <laughs> <laughs> okay okay so yes uh, i i do i can't go up here man. okay i'm gonna <laughs> cry a little bit hey <laughs> look <laughs> they in there for nine months it's it's there's some health benefits in there that's all i'm saying that's all i'm saying you see i mean that's the placenta isn't it that's what people have been like look, they do some weird shit with it and that's why the kids are so like they're so <laughs> will i don't know i, I don't, don't know. know i don't <laughs> that's I, the wrong juice man. i don't worse and worse i don't know i mean we we don't went down like a whole west world <laughs> rabbit hole uh yes i do i i have a routine i do i have face conditioner moisturizers i have a face wash lotion same thing with my hair and my beard so i i have a particular company that i use for all those products even a body wash so you know your skin is the important organ on of i mean your your skin is the organ that that needs stuff on it and it, it does tell about a lot about yourself so uh which i didn't really take serious until i got married I mean, I just put some cocoa butter on or some lotion, but now I got a basket of products just to keep my face, you know, not looking oily or looking too dry mm-hmm. or whatnot. Yeah. So it, it's, it's, I, um, I don't suffer from, I didn't like, like a, a dandruff. I found a, I actually found a product that was good for my scalp. That doesn't like dry it out or make it too oily. So that that was something that I had to figure out as I got older. But uh, what about you, J Dot? Uh, I think the most important thing for me is is like uh, keeping my hair cut. 
uh, for some reason, like my hair and my skin are tied together. My, once my hair starts getting a certain length, I'm breaking out. It's, it's, and it doesn't seem to be anything I can do about it. The moment I leave the barbershop, like stuff starts clearing up. Mm. It's, it's crazy. Uh, so I, I have to keep my hair cut. Um, but I have been using some products. Let me try my, my hand at a commercial real quick. Go for it. Uh, <laughs> big shout out to the guys at Respected Roots. Uh, I ran into them when I took that trip home from my aunt's funeral. I'm in the mall and uh, I have one of those faces that just says to people, like, he'll listen to my story. And so uh, I guess they, I walked by one of those little kiosks or something and they grabbed me and uh, I, he knew how to get, he knew how to get to me. He, you know, he mentioned my beard, which uh, I am, I have been struggling to reach respectability with the beard game. I'm trying, I'm trying to get to your level one day, uh, Willie, but you know, I'm single, so I don't have the same in-house benefits that you have. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so, uh, but the respected roots product, I use their hydration kit. I'm a moisturize, moisturize, moisturize type of person. And uh, so they have a, a all natural beard cleaner that you can also use for your face. But it, it also, I get a lot of ingrown hairs. And so that, that, started helping with that and then they have a uh, a beard conditioner which is really nice and then all of the the scents that they have are really good they have one called uh majestic which is like a, a sandalwood lavender type scent which is right up my alley it's very uh king-like if i can uh mm. if i could try to make that tie in real quick mm. Mm. Uh, and they have a body butter and uh i never body butter did not sound like a masculine thing to me to be we just talked about like uh, changing the narrative on manhood. A, a little while ago, you could not tell me as a man I could buy body butter, uh, but I, I like I like this body butter. It, you know, it makes everything smooth and, and silky, or whatever. Mm. But uh, here, Respected Roots is black-owned company. You know, they caught me in the kiosk and gave me their spill, and I actually used the products, and I really like them, and I think they've been uh, they've been helping me out. So, here, <coughs> Roots dot com if you're interested. Check them out. What is it? What is it again? Respectedroots.com. Gotcha. Respectedroots.com. Cool. Cool. Uh, I know you 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 do exfoliate, right, Big Brother? Yeah, I do exfoliate, and yeah. I found it beneficial, especially when we had to start wearing the mask during the pandemic because I was getting like, you know like breakouts and stuff like that. So I found it beneficial to set a exfoliating, you know, schedule for yourself. Mm -hmm. As I mentioned, when we went into the segment, I used to suffer from acne and I'll just tie this in real quick too. So eventually I went to a dermatologist and I just really wanted to put this in there for anyone who is suffering or just has any type of skin issues and you go and you're trying to find a dermatologist, make sure you do your research and get a dermatologist that specializes in your type of skin, whether it's ethnic or, you know, any type of skin that you have. So, you know, when I found one and they just set a routine for me and gave me the stuff that I need, and now to see my face just 100% now to get compliments on when people see my, my skin is, is amazing. So yeah, I exfoliate. Uh, probably every other day moisturize um i'm like j dot consistent moisturizer even moisturizer with sunscreen and then it yeah okay there's, there's no excuse for being grown and ashy huh? no no <laughs> we, we, we've heard that we've yeah j dot do you do you exfoliate i do i bought one of those uh brushes like it's like the vibrating one i, yeah. I didn't know how to say it it wasn't a yeah. pause worthy moment mm -hmm. but yeah i I get in there and you gotta get the you gotta get the old dead skin yeah. off of you, you know. Yeah. Had a, the brand new. Yeah. Joe, do you? No. I the most I ever done was like some mask stuff. You know what I mean? Okay. Like the the stuff you put on. Mm -hmm. I can do that. Um mm -hmm. I have like uh this thing is uh what's the brand of it? I can't remember the brand of it. Um it's through uh Target. They usually have this special brand and it has like exfoliating you wash your, your face with it mm -hmm. and it's like sandpaper almost yeah and mm -hmm. you wash it you know I, I use that once in a while when if i know that i'm working outside doing the yard doing this working on stuff where i feel like my face just needs to be washed uh but my 
if I wash a lot, my face gets really dry and it, and it starts like to harden. It's weird. Hmm. So I do use, uh, uh, my wife gets me this thing from like Beth, uh, what is it? Not Bath and Beyond. It's like some weird shit where they sell lotions for women, but they also sell it for men. Oh yeah. And, uh, yeah. uh can't remember what, what it's called, but uh, yeah, I think it's that. And they have like their own, uh, yeah. men products. Yeah. And I, I love it. This, this smells, smells really good. Um, kind of like musky mm -hmm. chocolate kind of, I, I don't know. And it works good for me. I mean, I put a little bit on my skin. I don't need much, my face, and uh, other than that, you know. I got um, I, I use that as well as a backup, but I, I like I said, I have a particular brand that I I use on pretty much all their products. Uh, are you are you King's man enough to admit that you use a loofah? I mean, I don't know if loofah is a um, demasculate thing in the community or not i i use a loofah because i use body gel no my soap is gel so it doesn't really it, it i can put it in a rag or i can just be like this tough thug in a shower and put it in my is, what and, the hell is that and, and put it in my hand and just rub it but <laughs> the loofah just works so well yeah, getting the dead the skin off was a loofah yeah the natural sponge? You use the natural one or you like a nylon I, or something? I just use whatever the, the seventy nine ninety nine cent one. You know, gotcha. I don't I yeah, I don't I don't have one <laughs> yeah, that's like a washable one. It's like after about a week or two I throw it away and then, you know, get a new one or something like that. A loofah. It's 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 a it's a it's like a washcloth that you put your liquid soap in, Joe. Your wife oh. don't your wife don't have a loofah? Oh, I didn't know that was what it was called. I was like, what the hell is that? No, I yeah. What the hell is a loop, man? No, yeah, 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 yeah. I, yeah, I know what you're talking about. And I and I have a uh it's like a bamboo type rag that's just for my face. And don't don't you don't you make your face at me, big brother. That I uh <laughs> Wait, no, I'm just gonna do what you do to me. I'm like, ooh, fancy. Fancy, yeah. <laughs> But it's like a it's like it's, it's like it's kind of like a bamboo type rag that mm -hmm. I use just for my face and my head. Cause I don't think a lot of men know that you're not supposed to use the same rag that you wipe your ass with on your face. I don't think a lot of men know that. I, I mean, that just sounds like common sense. It, if I wipe my ass with it, right, I might not want to put it near my face, right. Right, but I, I think I think a lot of men ain't they don't know that. Now, is it their fault? I don't know. But I, I, have, uh, I think they call it like a soap saver, but it's just like a silicone sleeve that you slide the bar soap in, and it has bristles and stuff on it. And I, I just go with that. And you know, my face—that's just my hands. I'm not. I don't get too crazy or that little brush i told you i have that mm -hmm. yeah i got one i got one yeah yeah so all right well fellas does anybody have any um closing um arguments or closing statements that they would like to um say before we close this out this evening um i just want everybody to notice that whole semen conversation, I did not participate in. I chilled. Like, I thought I was going to be the one everybody had to look out for. <laughs> Apparently, that's not the case. It's not. I feel like I was super tame for the last two episodes and sat through porn star and semen conversations. I, I didn't. And was quiet. I did. I, I need my credit. I need my credit for that. I didn't say I was a porn star. I just saying how. <laughs> You don't really be looking as sexy as you think you look until you look at yourself in the mirror. That's all I was saying. That that was it. I think it's clear from that conversation. There's some tapes out there. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully they stay in house and they haven't been leaked. If I, you know, if I heard it was a, a Willie sex tape being leaked, I wouldn't be too surprised at this. Right, 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 right. Like Big Willie style. <laughs> no, I, I I would I would say it, but I'm not gonna say it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
Fee gonna get you. <laughs> Fee has our. She actually said it in an episode, but oh. nobody, nobody caught up. Nobody caught it. So yeah, I'm gonna leave it as that. But Is that with the pants that you that she threw away. No, no. This it, it was it was a few weeks ago. It was a few weeks ago, but but nobody nobody caught it. So uh, go back. Go back and listen to it. <laughs> you to, it. Yeah, you gotta go back and find it. Yeah. But other than that, y'all, this was a great episode. Um we still got quite a bit of things that we can talk about, but we're gonna stop it here and we'll continue it on our next episode. So unless anybody else got anything else to they wanna say or talk about, we're gonna roll up out of here. Everybody good? Appreciate you guys as always. Yes, sir. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. Thank you, everyone, for stopping by. All right. Till next time, y'all. We appreciate you turning in to the League of Kings podcast. Stay connected between episodes on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Good Pods. For extra content, find us on YouTube at the League of Kings podcast and on TikTok at the League of Kings podcast. Until next time, keep exploring society and culture with us.